How you guys doing? Um, be happy to take your questions. Yeah, Sean, um, you're big on uh, Luther's kids. <laughs> I, look, there's obviously a little coincidence. I, I think the irony, though, a little bit was, um, you know, you kind of you wait, like always, you're waiting for the teams to get through, and then the team before us is Atlanta, and then I'm reminded that Caden's at Atlanta now, and I'm like, oh, Fontenot, Terry was with us, Caden's there. And they I'm needed like, an edge. As well. They needed an edge, and I'm like, maybe Caden and Luther, or maybe Caden and Jonah didn't get along. <laughs> so we were sweating that pick out, and then they ended up taking a different outside linebacker, and. Um, I got a text two seconds later from Caden, and and uh, yeah, uh, and, and they're two different type players. Obviously, Caden's playing more inside, and you know we get more of a pressure player here with this player. Well, for both of you, just outline your comfort level with his medicals. He's, yeah, we're very comfortable. Very comfortable with that. Yeah, we met on it. And yeah, we go through the process and and. Um, yeah, um, you know, he's above the board, and and we spent a lot of time. And, and it's funny because, obviously, if you went around 32 teams, but uh, a lot of the teams that we do info exchange with, we, we felt comfortable with it. Um, Jonah generated at least one hurry from eight different alignments this season. Is that versatility a part of the attraction? And do you guys have one role for him, or are you just liking to move them all over? Well, I, look, look, you start with one spot with a rookie player, and we do like the versatility. We think there's upside and, and growth potential. Um, but you know, generally speaking, when you're, when you're looking at the draft, the, there are certain positions that just, you know, all of a sudden – if you start projecting, how does tomorrow look, the next day look? And, um, and so a lot of times a pressure player will get a, a tie if there's too close. In this case, you know, we, we had two players. He was, you know, a half a round higher. And, um, but I think, you know, you start, you know, he's, he's an edge player that, uh, man, plays with energy, effort, all those things that you look for and um, real good football makeup, gift character. You know, we'll put a blue tag on some of these guys. He had that. Uh, Sean, you've talked about the strong outside young linebackers you have with Cooper, Benito, and Browning. How do, you got another? How does Jonah kind of fit into that mix now? Yeah, and look, you, you you're never afraid to draft on top of your strength. Um, we'll we'll sort that out. Um, you know, and and. Uh, <clears throat> It's, it's, it's always a harder position to find in the offseason and in free agency. And, and so we, we felt like he was definitely checked the pressure player box. Um, and then we'll sort through that depth uh, as we get to it. For both of you guys, were there opportunities to move up, move down? What kind of chatter was going on leading up to the pick? We actually were, you know, if Jonah wasn't there, we were actually considering moving back. And it would have been Sean's first time, maybe. Ever moving I, back? We, we had a cake ready. It was everything we were going to. But Jonah, you know, we were happy Jonah was there. But I, I've we taken did. like 30 deep breaths. <laughs> no. There was a number, of, you know, we had opportunity. Um, there was a number of good players there at that point. And so, but Jonah was just too good to pass. Yeah. I, there, there, was, there was one point we felt like if we could get past this team, we, we just saw this, this, and this. And, um, and, and we were able to do it. Speaking of moving around, you have six picks going into tomorrow. That's a lot. Do you plan on making all of those, or is that some capital to move around? Yeah, we were just going over the board, you know, before we came here. That's why we were late. And, you know, there's a number of good players tomorrow. We have six picks, but we have flexibility. You know, if there's a player up at the top of the fourth, we have flexibility to go up and get them. And, and you know, we can always move back. So, you know, the main thing is flexibility. We always talk about flexibility, but tomorrow's going to be – it's gonna be fun. It was six picks. We had to it wait. We had to fast. wait a while. Yeah, yeah we had to wait. It happens yeah. quickly. And Sean, um, you've talked, especially last year, about sort of working the assistant coaches in and the, the role that they play. And, and Jonah told us that he, he models his game after Hassan Reddick. Obviously, Vance, you know, had a lot of success. And so I'm just wondering, especially with defensive players, how much you know what Vance and your defensive staff, the feedback they give, factor into taking a player. So I think this. 
good question. I, I think it starts with the scouts. I mean, that's their primary job. Um, and they come back, and we have winter meetings before the combine, and we, we kind of begin to set this board. Um, coaches are still evaluating our own team, and then you kind of get to the combine free agency. And when we come back, we collect the – call it the postseason data, you know, the workouts, and the coaches will write these reports, and, man, we'll hash through disagreements, and, and it's quite a process. And um, – and – Look, you, you, you're not really, you know, you hope, hopefully you're not drafting a player where there's a giant split in the room. And, and but, man, as you work through it, and then you, and then and then you go back and you go study more tape. And this was one that was fairly clean. Um, yeah, we do tr we do try to, oh, say what's this player? Who's he remind you of? Um, and so a lot of different names come up, and we pull up comps, and then, um, you know, we look at height, weight, size, and but but the one thing is you. you you know, it's kind of like those pelts on a horse. And if you're a pressure player at some point, you you got to have production. And he, this player had that. Uh, when Bo was in here earlier, he talked about getting a getting a text or a call from uh, from from Peyton Manning, uh, who, who also reached out to, to Zach when he when he got traded here. What, what's just it been like to kind of have him, you know, in an unofficial role, of course, but just to have him around and, and interact with guys that way? Yeah, I mean, especially for a quarterback, you know, Someone like Peyton, his status, legend. Um, he's has his camp, you know, and I think Bo went to the camp. But I mean, it's huge to have someone like that here, who's close, you know, to the organization. I think it's it's great, you know, for for all of our players and everyone in the organization. He comes by all the time, and we have dinner, and so I mean, it's it's outstanding to pick his brain. Um, obviously, he knows all the quarterbacks. He's got um, Archie. That, that you know, it's interesting because sometimes you wonder how does he have time. Meaning those are just a couple of examples, but you know something will happen, and Archie would send a text or Peyton, and he's always thinking. Um, I think when when he watches a, an NBA game and he sees something, it, it, it's just it's one of those unique traits that he has. And and you know he sent me a text after Zach and then after Bo, and he's just uh, um, you know he's always been like three steps ahead, and and. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, he's a great resource. Uh, for, for both of you guys, because you've done this a long time, and last year with J.L. Skinner, he had that injury getting ready for the draft. I know you guys are high on him. How often when you've had a guy that has some sort of something late, not chronic, but something you know leading up to the end of their season or pre-draft, has it worked out? Or if you were going to, I guess, average it out, does it feel like more times a guy that had a higher grade, you're glad? Here's the biggest thing. All right, so... Real quick, if we have a player that's going to miss a portion of anything, let's say that when rookie camp in two weeks starts, we we just put a little yellow note there. It lets us know it's just an alert, you know. And then and then we kind of get a time frame. Um, I think more importantly is what happens after, because some players might have to miss something, and yet there's still a serious medical concern. Um, we, Skinner was a good example. Ryan Ramchek, we drafted in the first round, was a yellow, and he was going to be ready in July. So, what's the what month is July? Seven. So it was a yellow seven. Um, in in Jonah's case, it's a yellow five. What does that mean? May. So I think we can expect him. And we'll do walkthrough and everything. He'll be in the program, and and so um, the ones that become more challenging now. It, that's just like a temporary grade. What's the what's it like after the? And it's all good. Um, the hard thing with rookies sometimes is when they get into September, um, because you guys know it, it's hard for a rookie to begin with, and then if it if it involves training camp, it becomes more challenging. And fortunately, you know, with in his case, um, the expectation is sometime in in May. Um, we feel good about that. I have a question. It's not specific to the two men you've, you've drafted so far, but with NIL in college sort of getting a foothold in college football, um, does that provide another inflection point in your draft prep in that you can see before the kids arrive here what how they handle fame and fortune? Yeah, I think it's just another layer for the scouts, and it's something we look at, you know, because it's not the same type of player maybe we're getting 10, 5, 10 years ago, and these guys are they're getting paid. Um, how has it changed their life? How has it affected their life? 
Uh, do they still have a passion for the game? And so our scouts do a really good job at digging into that. So it's a, it's a really good question. It's something that you know we're we're still looking at. We probably don't have a, a, a grasp yet, but we do look at it. And and the main thing is, do they love ball? And does this money change the fact you know um, for that love, you know, for that passion? And there's so many of these changes, and in, in, but the the one that also causes stress for the college coach is the portal. Now they're recruiting, and the good news for us is like. The transfer portals, you know, out on the street, you know, there's. I think that's hard. I think that's hard when you're re, when you're literally recruiting your whole roster year round, because all of us, I don't, whatever endeavor we've had, whatever job we've had, um, if there was a portal, um, I'm sure, I, you know, I, I look back. There's like five different times where I'd be like, I'm in the portal. I'm up, you know, and and so, that's. I think the nice thing. I think it's one of the challenges for the college coach today, but. You do, you, you do get to, like the cornerback at Toledo, this is, um, man, he has success and he's got an NIL here, there, in the next place, and, you know, the, the grandmother's saying you're staying here at Toledo. And so there, you do get to evaluate the whole, <clears throat> there's so many different things now that are different, and, and uh, we pay attention to that, but relative to the money. Um, but you get to see the players that, how you they know, thrive, you know, with the money, you know, and so you see the good and the bad of it. And uh, so it's just another challenge for the scouts. Someone will be donating to, and I'll look at George thinking, what are we doing with our NIL money? <laughs> NIL money? I, don't know <laughs> I don't know that, um, but it is more chances to evaluate character, yeah. I think.